Mark Marquez is starting to realize that he looks similar to Pedro Acosta. Marquez is aware that Acosta rides with a similar mindset after the America's MotoGP. After taking the lead in a MotoGP race for the first time, Acosta ended up second behind Maverick Vinales, completing an incredible start to his rookie season. Before Marquez overtook Acosta to take the lead for the first time on a Ducati, Acosta was already past Jorge Martin. Michael Laverty told TNT Sports that Mark is starting to realize how much Pedro resembles him. He always makes cuts back. Although everything between the two riders was clean, it's clear that Acosta wants to get back against Mark straight away. At turn 11, Marquez lost the lead in the race and went into the gravel, allowing Vinales to win and Acosta to record his highest MotoGP result to date. The crash was put down by Grassini rider Marquez to an issue with braking issues. Neil Hodgson said, I didn't understand his crash at all. It was odd. He went down very early. There was obviously a problem with his brakes. He made a few moves that I don't think he planned. However, if there's a minor problem with your front brake, or if the lever isn't quite where you want it to be, that could be the reason. He'll be happy, for the most part. He now understands his crash's cause. He was leading the race at the moment. On the old bike, he was the top Ducati rider. Mark is like that. He'll take every good thing that came out of that. This season, Marquez has shown to be the fastest rider on a Ducati GP23. But he has finished the last two Grand Prix outside of the points, even though it might be said that luck failed him. After three rounds, Marquez is behind championship leader Martin by 44 points. Importantly, for Ducati's star new recruit, he failed to perform up to the pre-race expectations that predicted he would win on his new bike. At the Circuit of the Americas, Marquez has won seven times, but his chance to add an eighth ended in the gravel. Acosta wanted to avoid grip problems after experiencing them late in the sprint, so he tried to save as much tyres as he could. Although the battle increased along the process, Acosta said that taking the lead in a Grand Prix didn't increase the pressure. The Gas Gas Tech 3 KTM rider commented, It was pretty much the same. I tried to restrain myself so as not ruin the tyres. We were a little annoyed yesterday when Jorge went ahead of me. I was trying to avoid heating my rear or moving aggressively. Every action you take now will eventually pay off. I was trying not to get carried away and to remain calm. Speaking about his fight with Marquez, Acosta thinks he understands why the eight-time world champion crashed. Acosta said, Very nice move that he made. It was great. There were some damp places in this area the entire weekend, which is why I believe he crashed. He was a little on the left side, but it was still a great battle with Mark and the boys. He is teaching me a lot of stuff. He is incredible talented. Forget the Ducatis. Another Italian manufacturer has done its homework. The Aprilia has been fast every race weekend. Is fellow Italian manufacturer Aprilia ready to challenge Ducati as the most competitive bike in the MotoGP class? In terms of race victories, the current score after six races this season is 3-3. Three three. However, Aprilia only has four riders on the grid compared to Ducati's eight. With Maverick Vinales riding the RSGP, which has won three of the last four races, momentum is undoubtedly with the team. Massimo Rivola, CEO of Aprilia Racing, spoke to TNT Sports after Vignali's flawless double at Austin last weekend, which included moving up from 11th to 1st in the Grand Prix. To be honest, if we really analyse the data, the number 41 was the fastest bike in Qatar. If we analyse the specifics, the number 12 was the fastest bike at Portimao. Once more, the number 12 bike was the fastest one here. Vinales only found the balance he was looking for at Portimao, having struggled to match Espargaro in winter testing and the first race in Qatar. It's possible that our bike is a proper racing bike. It's not a production bike that performs flawlessly on every track. We are all going above and above. It's difficult to find the perfect spot, Massimo Rivola said. With Maverick clearly in the right place, we are headed in the right direction. We have to make sure he stays there. Only a gearbox issue at the Portimao Grand Prix ended Vinales' winning streak as he was headed for a secure podium. Reliability was clearly a problem in Portimao. However, 
Given how quickly the performance has grown over the last few years, Rivola admitted that there may be less time to maintain consistency in reliability. It's the cost we must face. Later in the season, we'll take another step. We are aware of the projects we are working on and their potential benefits. However, it takes time. He stated, it's not a plug and play device. Lorenzo Savadori and the test team and our suppliers need to work hard and quickly on this. With three points separating him from Ducati Lenovo's Enea Bastianini and Pramac Ducati's Jorge Martin, Vinales is currently third in the World Championship. But in Austin alone, Vinales scored 17 points more than the top two Ducati riders combined. Prior to unforeseen grip problems, Espargaro was the clear favourite to win the Grand Prix after finishing third in the Qatar Sprint. Now he is 17 points behind Vinales in seventh. Francesco Bagnaia says that after experiencing chattering problems during the MotoGP America's Grand Prix on Sunday, he was forced to go into race defence mode yet again. Factory Ducati rider Bagnaia finished over seven seconds behind race winner Maverick Vinales after duelling early on with Marc Marquez, Pedro Acosta and Jorge Martin for the lead in the race. Bagnaia lost pace with the lead pack and was unable to keep up with Aprilia's Vinales and second place Da Costa on the KTM during the second half of the 20-lap race. Also, he was unable to challenge teammate Enea Bastianini's Ducati GP24 and Pramac rider Martin. At the Circuit of Americas, the Italian rider used a soft rear tyre. This decision allowed Bastianini to climb to third on lap 18, after he had effectively tested the compound's durability during the warm-up earlier on Sunday. But he was forced to maintain his position and try to save as many points as he could in Austin due to tyre vibration issue that dogged him in the Qatar race and ruined his Portugal weekend. I had a great start to my race and felt good. After the sixth lap, I thought I could challenge for the win or the podium, he said. But I started to have a lot of chattering, a lot of vibrations on the left side, and it was very difficult to manage everything. On the right side, I completely ruined the tyre. Therefore, making corners on the right side was also difficult. After seven laps, I raced in defence and it was really challenging. I made an effort to handle everything, but in this case, it's obvious that we need to understand the situation and find solutions because things are quite challenging at the moment. The fact that I had to start the season racing in defence is a lot like what happened in 2022. I have complete faith in my team to find a solution. We'll be competing for the top spot once more. Perhaps Ducati's least competitive weekend of 2024 was at the US round, as Vinales stunned everyone by coming from 11th on the grid to win, and Tech 3's Acosta finished second to drop Ducati to third place overall. After three rounds of the season, reigning champion Bagnaia is in fifth place in the standings, 30 points behind championship leader Martin. But the 27-year-old's DNF in Portugal, which came about as a result of a collision with Marquez, skews the picture in the riders' table. What are your thoughts? Does Acosta have similarities to Marquez? Let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.